Hello, greetings, brothers and sisters, family united by the blood of Jesus. We welcome you warmly to this hour, this special time in the 24 7 prayer experience that has been going on for many days and weeks already. But now for two times a day, there's a special meeting led by Pastor Don McLafferty of In Discipleship. He is passionate about revival, about discipleship amongst all ages. And here today, I am already seeing 115 participants, and that number is just growing. Praise God. And so I have a special verse that I wish to share. It comes from Revelation 7. It says, after these things, I looked and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number. Hallelujah. So many redeemed that were before the throne of the Lamb. Of all nations, tribes, tongues, people, representing the nations of the earth who have accepted the gift of salvation. But you know, it reminds me of another special verse in Acts chapter 2, where it says, there were dwelling in Jerusalem people from every nation under heaven, and they could hear in their own language. There were Parthenians, uh, there were Illuminites, they were from Thagrelia, Egypt, parts of Libya. Here's what's amazing, friends. When God does a mighty thing, people from around the world are able to participate. And we are journeying towards heaven. And right now, here we are, family. We speak many different languages, I'm guessing. Even this time is being translated into another language or two. And here we are, united by a common experience. Salvation given by Jesus. Oh, friends, please be encouraged that God is in control of this world's timeline, even now. Praise God, we're journeying towards heaven. For this hour's experience, we start, we have a worship time together. It might be similar to the worship experience you have in the family circle where you're at. There will be leaders to lead us into the word of God. And then after the worship experience, Pastor Don will lead us and guide us in the book of Acts. This time happens twice daily here at 7 a.m. Eastern and then at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And it's a continuing experience. And so no lesson is repeated. You can tune in twice a day. Our worship leaders this morning are come from several different countries and they can introduce themselves. And Irene, Sister Irene, is able to lead us at this time. As we prepare for the word Open your hearts to receive what God has in store for you. And also, make sure to grab a piece of paper and a writing instrument, a pen or a pencil, because Pastor Don will have an exercise for us. Sister Irene, would you lead us in opening prayer and with your worship team, take us forward in family worship. Good morning, everyone, and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the gift of life you've given unto us this morning. We pray that may your Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct us. May your words make a complete difference in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So for our worship, uh, for our worship service this morning, I want to let you know that we I'm here with uh, Elder Edith and Professor Maisie. That's how you call it, call her sister Maisie anyway. And I would ask, I would like to welcome uh, just Maisie to take the next step for the praise for Thanksgiving. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord. For when we give thanks, we are responding to God's goodness and graciousness to us. Psalms 107 verse 1 and 2 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. we, We give thanks because we know that our God is good and gracious to us. So in the next few minutes, could we just write in the chat what we are thankful for, how we are thankful for God's goodness towards us. So let us give thanks for God. For God is always good to us. I will start by saying I will give God, I give thanks to the Lord for his saving grace. 
and for his answered prayers. Thankful for love to me. Somebody says, I'm thankful for his love to me. Thanks for love Thank to me. Thank you for, for loving me. Thank, Thank you for loving me. Thank you. Thanks for another day. Thank, th oh, these are going so fast. I can't read them. <laughs> I give thanks for his, oh, for heal me. Thanks for his peace. Thankful for Jesus, our Savior. Thankful for his mercy. Thankful for his word. Oh dear, thank you for protecting me. Oh, and you forget it. Thank you for that for long that you used to tell me. Thank you for the gift of life. Yeah, there is so many thanksgiving and I can't read them all because they're going very quickly. So we are thankful to God for his goodness towards us because he's given us life and kept us this far. Now we will have Sister Edith and Sister Gisela will sing a chorus for us. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me the great salvation so full and free. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen and amen. We praise the Lord for, the, for, for everything that he has done for us. The Bible says, give, thank, give praise unto the Lord, for he is worthy. So in the book of Psalms, chapter 150, verse 1, 2, and 6, it says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him for the sounding of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and the lyre. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And let the living proclaim. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Does any of us have breath this morning? Do we have breath at all? Let us praise God with the breath of life that he has given unto us. Let us break forth in praise in for the next two minutes, and we can give out our popcorn praises as some would write their praises unto the Lord in the chat room, and I will read them as they keep popping up. For example, I would say, Lord, I praise you for you are worthy. Lord, I praise you for you are the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, I praise you for 42 years of my sister and her husband marriage. Amen. Lord, I praise you for you are faithful. Lord, I praise you for you are worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Lord, for I am free. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very right well. Lord, I praise you this morning that you are the only source that can remove evil from the heart and replace it with the goodness of God. Lord, Amen. I praise you. Lord, you Lord are... I pray. Go ahead. I praise you because you are the almighty God and the only true God. Lord, Amen. I praise you. Lord, you Lord, are I praise you, you are for only... your protection. Amen. Praise, praise, God for all who, praise God from all who blessings flows. And in the Amen. chat room, 
Someone says, I praise God for he is my deliverer. For I praise God. Let all who have breath praise ye the Amen. And I praise you, Heavenly <coughs> Father, because you've got my name, our names engraved in the palm of your hands. I mm -hmm. praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 <coughs> Father, because you are my strength and my salvation. Amen. Amen. In the, in the chat room, says, I Father, I praise you, you for you are the heaven. I praise you, Lord, because you are wonderful. You are loving. You are I praise you because you are. Amen and amen. And at this time, I praise you, Lord, for you are my refuge and my strength. Amen. 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 I praise you, Lord, for keeping an eye on, our, in, on every, on all of your creature. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. You, Lord, you are my pillar of my strength. Okay. Praise you, Lord, for life, health. I praise you, Lord. You never give up on me. Even when I run away, you come running after me. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen and praise amen. You. So as we transition into a season, into a season of confession, I'd like to welcome Elder Edith. Indeed, God inhabits the praises of his children. I'm so sure that he's right here with us because he cannot resist when his children start praising him. We draw him down. He doesn't take us up. He draws him too close to us. And now we'll go in a season of compassion and we'll open our Bibles and we are going to read Psalms chapter 51, verse 1. Two and seven. Gisela will read it for us. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Amen. That is my heart felt cry and I believe it's your cry too and so we are going to go in a season of private prayer and we'll silently ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and we'll silently confess our sins as we are convicted. We'll take two minutes, one minute will be for the searching and the second minute will be for the confessing, confession. And when we hear a song, that would be a signal for us to come back.
Amen. We'll close our eyes for a word of prayer. Precious Father in heaven, thank you so much for the Holy Spirit who searches our hearts and convicts us of our sins. We thank you for your promise that if we confess our sins, you are faithful, you are just to forgive us of all, not some, but of all our sins, our pride, our selfishness, our bitterness. And you are ready to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we've come here as we are. We are not worthy, but we believe that we are covered with the righteousness of Jesus. And so, Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for the blood of Jesus, which cleanses us from all our sins. And we are able to present ourselves into your presence with confidence, knowing, Father, that we will obtain mercy to help us in time of need. In Jesus' name, amen. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to Thank you so much to our worship team who have led us to the throne of God, preparing our hearts for further yet teachings from the Bible, from the word through Pastor Don, leading us in a message, returning to the book of Acts, living by the Holy Spirit. Pastor Don of In Discipleship is passionate about teaching young and young at heart how to grow as disciples of Jesus and passionate about revival, calling people back to an exciting relationship with God. Now, I invite you, if you are brave, that you would turn on your camera. It's a way of just building a greater family experience around this moment we could share together. And also, I invite you to grab a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen because we will have an opportunity to interact through drawing together. Pastor Don, we look forward to your teaching at this time. Thank you so much, Pastor Ted. Good morning, everybody from the rainy woods of Tennessee this morning. And I want you to know if this is your first time that this will be a teaching time in an intergenerational style, meaning that we'll have activities and I hope and pray that the message that we learn today from the Word of God, uh, that you will pass it on to a child, a teenager, a young adult, or an older adult in your life. So first of all, please take a sheet of paper and please make three sections, three sections on your sheet of paper, and then draw a square on the upper one. So just do that real quick, please. And this is going to be about rooms this morning, joining the room. So just draw this real quick. So just two lines separating the three sections and then put one square up here. And in this first one right here, I am looking for seven people, seven people representing seven different countries that would take about 15 seconds. You have to be very, very quick and answer this question. Please tell us, all of us, what is a room that has a special memory in your life of coming together. It doesn't have to be about church or about God necessarily. This is just getting us thinking about coming together. But can you think of a special room and a special time in your country when, when maybe your family came together to do something or friends came to do something together? I want to hear about them, but you have to tell us in 15 seconds or less 
and tell us what country you're representing. If you talk too long, I'll say thank you very, very much. I'll go to the next person. Who's the first person? Alice. Okay, go ahead, Alice. Uh, I'm from South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, the room of, uh, that is a memory for me is the labor room um, when I gave birth to my son. Ah, yes. Thank you so much for sharing. And let's have the next person, whoever answers, please put your video on so we can see you and see maybe a little bit of your country where you are from. So who's next? Go Hope, um, are you are you raising your hand, Hope? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, go ahead. From, yeah, Kent in, in England. So uh in the kitchen, uh when we are celebrating my mother's eightieth uh, birthday and her, oh. she had grandchildren all around her. It was really beautiful. Nice. So you all came together to celebrate her birthday. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's two, I need number three. And we're going all the way to Deborah. Yes, I'm from Canada and my room would be at the dining room. Huh? The dining room, we ate together there. Where you eat together, you have lots of happy memories there. Good, very, very good. And let's go to Sharon. There's a Sharon with a hand up. Yes. I'm a Guyanese by birth, but I am residing in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, that's in the Caribbean. My memory is when I got my first granddaughter. And my first grandchild brought me memory that I'm now I'm not a grandmother, but I'm a mother. That's how I felt, like being a mother all over again. Fresh Fantastic. memory. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. And I love your background there, your room with all the colors. <laughs> That's my classroom. Okay. <laughs> Number five. Let's go to Polly. Where's Polly? If you can put your I'm video here. on. Okay, go Hi, ahead. Everyone. Oh, it's, it won't come on. Okay, there okay, we go. That's okay. Um, so the living room, Christmas, Christmas time with everyone. Wonderful. What country? Oh, I'm from Kenya. All right. Good, good, good. Fantastic. Thank you. And I'll take two more. And let's see. I'm looking here, uh, trying to look fast. Uh, it looks like Jacqueline has a hand up. Yes, I, I'm representing Jamaica. I am mm -hmm. in the U.S. now and I'm out walking. But I'm representing Jamaica. And the room is my mother's bedroom. It was on the 24th of February. That was the last moment I spent with her in her room virtually. And that was the day she died. It was a wonderful experience seeing her just giving everything to God and then just giving. Then the life just was taken from her. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Jacqueline, and God bless you with as you grieve, grieve her passing, but also look forward to being reunited when Jesus comes again. And now, finally, last one will be Delhi. I'm Kalile, formerly from South Africa. I'm in Hiram, Atlanta area, USA. The place I have is the family room where we always come together with my 50 years of years of marriage with my husband. So that's Very. the place we always say our prayers, Sabbath school lesson. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you all for sharing. Wasn't that a joy to hear about special rooms from around the world? That's fantastic. Thank you all for sharing. This morning, it's about gathering in a room. And let's go to and coming together in the room, in the book of Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. And here's the setting as you're turning there. Acts chapter 1. Jesus, in verses 9 through 11, was standing there, and the cloud received him out of their sight as they're watching him in verse 9. And he had gone up, 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 until he was just a speck in the sky, and they couldn't see him any longer. And as they were gathering intently watching, verse 10, in verse 11, 
there was two men in white who said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into the sky? I love this next part. This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Hallelujah. This same Jesus is coming again. Now, I would have been tempted to just stand there and just, just watch and just watch and watch. I would be caught up with wonder, wouldn't you, if you were there? But you know what? Praise God. The disciples remembered that Jesus had told them to wait and to, to come together waiting for the gift that had been promised. And now we're going to take up the story in verse 12. And let's read 12 through 14. I need three people to read one verse each. Acts 1, verses 12 through 14. I'll read one In verse. Read 12. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll read 12. Uh -huh. Then they turned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Amen. And when they were come in, they went up into a upper room where aboard both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zealous, Zealous and Judas, the brother of Jesus. This is Judas, the son all of all continued David. with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Thank you so much. Now, here's what I need you to do. With your sheet of paper right here, now we draw the second room right here. Now, this room right here is depicting the upper room, okay? So just draw a room right here, and I have a quick assignment for you. With this second room, remember this first one is the special one in your life that you have happy memories of. This one is the upper room in the book of Acts. And I'm going to give you just about 45 seconds or so. Please draw a quick picture and label it of anybody that was listed in scripture that was in the upper room that particularly interests you or surprises you that they would even show up in the upper room to pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit. So just, just don't have to write everybody, but just draw a couple quick faces of somebody that was mentioned in scripture that was pressing in the upper room, praying for the Holy Spirit that surprises you that they were there. I'll give you just a few moments and then I will call you together. And I'll, I want to see your artwork if you're willing to share it. And I'm just putting a timer on here. Okay, our time is up. Now, let's try it this way. If you're willing to put your video on and put your picture up there, I'm just going to call on just a few. And uh, uh, please show us your picture and who most surprises you that they were praying for the Holy Spirit with the other believers all pressed together in that room. We'll start there with Irene. And uh, please uh, unmute yourself and Show us your picture and tell us who surprises you. Put your picture up a little closer. Um, oh, sure I lost you. Can... you. Oh, I can't sorry. see you because of your background. Sorry. Oh, okay. So my picture actually is Judas. I'm surprised that Judas. She was yeah. Yes, and that wasn't the that wasn't the Judas who betrayed, right? Because he yeah. he it's passed away, but another surprised. Judas, and that's still surprising, isn't it? That one of the disciples that would have run right away was there. Let's go to the uh, Joy has has a picture up. Who surprised yes. you? The people that surprised me um, was Jesus' stepbrothers, particularly with their mom, Mary. 
Yes. Like, yeah, Jesus' stepmothers would be there. So one of and, them, I think, is James. Yes. And yes, Joy, why, why does it surprise you that these stepbrothers were in the room praying for the gifts Jesus had promised? Why does it surprise you? Uh, because they were previously quite um, antagonistic to Jesus. And yes. I didn't get the impression that they really accepted him. Um, yes. So I, I, And I don't see any uh, where in the Bible where they were converted uh, to him. So it was a surprise to see them Thank there. Thank you. In the room. Thank you very much, Joy. I'm looking for anybody that will hold up a picture of somebody that surprises you that they showed up in the room. Anybody else with another picture? I'm looking real quick. Is there anybody else? Uh, let's see. I see uh, Philomena. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but I'm trying to say your name. Philomena. Philomena. Yes. I have... I have Peter here. <laughs> I don't Why does he surprise you so much that he would be there? Well, he is not the one that surprised me, but the work of grace. Yes. Yeah. He had denied Jesus three times, and he said he wasn't, but yet yeah, the grace of God allowed, gave him, Jesus gave him a second chance. Yes. And Amen. Amen, everybody. Now, yes. my friend. My friends, the, the Bible, the Word of God, takes the time to list not all 120 people, but some of the particular people that the Holy Spirit wants you to know about and me to know about this morning, that they were in particular pressing together in the upper room. It's not by chance that those people are listed. They're listed there for holy reasons. The disciples were mentioned because I believe one of the reasons why they're mentioned is because each one of those men had run away and deserted the Christ Jesus, right? Everyone had deserted, and all of them were pressing together now and praying, praying for the gift promised. Does that give you hope and encouragement this morning? That if God Amen. can take deserters, Amen. doubters, people who are unfaithful to God and gather them together in the name of Christ to pray for this gift. Wow, that's precious. But I also think it's precious also looking at this list and as already mentioned, I love it that Jesus' mother was there. Do you love that? Mm -hmm. Here, the one whose heart was broken, pierced by the sword, so to speak, right? Here she's pressing in, pressing in as an older woman and she's crying out to God for the gift that her son Jesus had promised. I love it that the brothers are mentioned. The brothers are already mentioned. They were such a, a oh, such like a thorn in the side of Jesus, right? Year after year after year, they were painful for Jesus to, to live with. And these brothers were now taking Jesus at his word. They could have been anywhere else but the upper room, but they too pressed in to the presence of that room to be together. Now, my friends, uh, it mentions something here and we have to highlight it quickly. Notice in verse 14 that it says, they all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer along with the women, along with the women. Who could these women be? Now, there were women that were always going around supporting Jesus Christ in his ministry. Isn't this precious? Mm. And I just believe that from the testimony of Scripture, you know, Scripture interprets Scripture. When it says the women, doesn't delineate who they are, but it says the women, like everybody should know who those women are. There is a place in Scripture that actually lists who the precious women were that were always going around like a little uh, team, a support team to Jesus, a prayer team and a support team to Jesus. And it's in Luke 8, verses 1 through 3. And I just believe that this list of the women probably contains some of these ones in Luke 8, 1 through 3. Okay, I need three volunteers to read a verse each. Someone that hasn't read yet this morning, please. Luke 8, verse 1 says, Amen. 
And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. Yes, thank you. Verse 2, someone? Concerning the man of men which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Yes. And Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. Yes. So in that list, there's women that have means, right? There's women of some wealth. Maybe they were business women, right? Um, entrepreneurs. There were also women, some of them with a past. Just like the disciples had a past, some of these women had a past. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Some of them have, were known for, oh, you're the woman who had <laughs> demons passed out. You're the woman who had this kind of disease that no one wanted to come near you because of this disease. These were women that now understood that they were daughters of the king. And these daughters of the king, just like the disciples with a the past, they pressed in together to pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The scriptures testifies of these precious people, very much like you and me today, who were hungry and thirsty for the Spirit of God. Do you love that? It's yes. precious. Now, we like to think that in that upper room, we have an idea of maybe what was going on there. But you know, again, if you go to this book right here, Acts of the Apostles, if you go to page 37 in the chapter titled Pentecost, we read this uh, on page 37 of Acts of the Apostles. The disciples prayed with intense earnestness for a fitness to meet men. And then it says they wanted to be able to speak words that would lead sinners to Christ. Now, that part sounds like that's not too difficult in the upper room. So they're just praying. Uh, that they can can be fit to meet other people and that they can speak words to lead people to Christ. Okay, amen. But then it says this, the, the words of inspiration say, putting away all differences, all desire for the supremacy, they came close together in Christian fellowship. Wow, they put away differences. All need to be higher than someone else. That means Peter was he put away his desire to be number one. That means the sons of thunder, James and John. You remember the time when they came up to Jesus and they said, we want to ask you a favor. Can you just put us on the right and the left? I mean, not asking for much. We just want to be in the highest places. And it caused a big, big ruckus among the disciples, a big problem. James and John had to put away their need to be in positions where everyone could see them and just lay that out before God in humility. Everyone in the room put away differences. Oh, my friends, what a precious thing it is when we put away all differences. It says putting away all differences. It doesn't say putting away some differences. Now, my friends, uh, I love it that here this morning, we represent so many different countries. And we have so many different looks, right? And the thing is, we're not saying that, that we don't ever talk about countries or we don't talk about our cultures. No, but we take our, all of our identities in so many different things and we lay them out before God and we say, God, we are all in equal need of Jesus Christ. We are all, amen. We all equally need you, Father in heaven. Amen. And we all equally need the Holy Spirit. And we are all simply brothers and sisters Amen. on par. No matter if you have more experience with Jesus than I do, if you're smarter than I am, if you look more beautiful than I do, you know what I'm saying? We're all equal before the cross, thirsty for the gift that Jesus promised. This is what was going in that going on in the upper room. And it says these days of preparation were days of deep heart searching. Disciples felt their spiritual need and they cried to the Lord for the holy unction that was to fit them for the work of soul saving. They were weighted with the burden of the salvation of souls. 
They realized that the gospel was to be carried to the world, and they claimed the power that Christ had promised. So there's really two things going on here. Are you with me? They're praying for fitness, fitness, like strength, to be able to share Jesus with power all around the world. But then they're also doing the thing, God, change my heart so that I can treat Irene as my sister, so I can treat Ken as my brother. Are you with me? So that we treat each other simply as brothers and sisters in the family of God. Hallelujah. That happened for 10 days. That's what they did. My friends, this is such an important work, such an important work. We go right now to breakout rooms. And for the next, the next seven minutes, can we pray for these two things? Pray that God puts away differences in our hearts that keeps us away from each other. And that also he gives us the power to share Jesus anywhere, any place. Let's take those next seven minutes, and then we're going to come back to the word and pray for something else. See you in seven minutes. find us right now. Amen. Love and Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come before you this morning to thank you for your love towards us. Father, as we come, you know our hearts, you know that above that our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know them, dear Father, but you? We pray that you will forgive us, dear Father, and that you would unify us in your spirit. Help us to love you even more. I pray that you will bless all the participants here in this room. Continue to be with us during this day. Guide and direct, dear Father, in your way. Send your Holy Spirit to tabernacle with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And Father, as I join in this prayer, I pray that you would help us to be loving and lovable people, not only in words, but may it be in our deeds, so that as we see each other, we will truly, others would truly know that we belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tendre Père des Cieux, vous entendez le cri, l'appel de vos enfants. On se tourne vers toi. Et on tient dans nos cœurs tes promesses. On implore, Seigneur, ton Esprit Saint, que tu nous as dit que vous nous donneriez. Vous avez dit de demander. Ce matin, Seigneur, on implore ta présence au milieu de nous. On implore ta présence pour toute la session de la conférence générale. Mets ton Esprit Saint dans le cœur de toutes les personnes qui vont euh, être dans la, le mouvement de sélection des dirigeants et permet Seigneur que tout s'accorde avec ton Esprit Saint et que ta volonté se fasse dans le précieux nom de Jésus. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord, cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Lord, we all come before you, Lord, broken vessels, but Lord, we are here to be mended by your Spirit. So Lord, may your Spirit abide within our hearts mm. so that we would be transformed, Lord, to Uh, reveal your likeness, Lord. Mm. We love you so much. Amen. 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 God, hear our prayers now as we as we shift just a little bit 
to praying for that second part of the prayers in the upper room. God, prepare our hearts to be fit to go anywhere your spirit wants to send us. Give us a hunger for the loss that we don't have. Hunger way beyond our hunger today. Hunger uh, for people who are not ready for Jesus to come. Amen. Amen. Who else yes, will Father, pray along these lines? Go ahead. Yes, Father, I come in agreement with all these prayers. But I ask you to give us an earnest love for souls and a willingness to go. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Heavenly Father, Father help. go ahead. Help us to um, look out and see the work that is before us, Lord. Help us to recognize that it is your spirit calling us to do mighty works, to do great works, Lord, all by your power, Lord. Help us to recognize those things. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to do work for you. Give us the courage, dear Father, and the boldness to walk in your ways to do what you did when you were here on earth. Help us there, Father. And as we have opportunity, may we use it to glorify your name and to spread the gospel in all the world. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Father, we like, truly revive and reform us. Help us to be your true disciples in words and in deeds. Amen. 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 Now let's pause just a moment. Uh, we may have a minute or two left, maybe. Uh, is there someone that wants us to pray for you to reach your particular country or your province or your state for the kingdom of God? Yes. I am, I am praying already for the community of Naikada where I'm from, so I would be glad if I can have someone joining me in that prayer. Did you say Nigeria? Naikodak. Naikodak. Okay. Who will pray? Uh, let's ask one person to pray. I'll pray. Father, Thank I come you. in agreement with my brothers and sisters as we lift up this area in Naikodak. I'm asking you to empower my sister to be able to reach this area for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Who is the next person who, who also has a burden for a particular country or place? Thailand. Who will pray for Thailand? Father, remember the country, Thailand. We yes. bring this country before you, Father, as we bring the places where we are all from, Father. We have a burden. We have a love for these people, Father, and we long to be Amen. Are we back? It looks like we're almost back. We're coming back right now. Okay. Ah, isn't that a precious work? To ask God to do that work in us, but Amen. also through us, to send us out. It's a precious, precious work. Now, my friends, please open the word of God to Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27. Ezekiel 36, verses 26 and 27. How many of you feel like you need help? to put away differences you have with people that have hurt you. How many of you feel like, just give me a thumbs up if, if we have anybody that relates to that. Do we have anybody relates to that? I've had to pray for that different times in my life. Uh, I wish I didn't have to tell you that, but I have to say, I have to raise my hand. Many times I've had to say, God, put away differences. Put away, uh, put away things that are separating me from somebody that maybe I'm hurt with or discouraged with. So Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. Are you there? Just give me a thumbs up if you're there. Are you there? Okay. Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. 
This is what the Lord is ready to do today for all of us online. Yes, but also for our brothers and sisters meeting in the general conference session today. He is ready to do this work in all of us. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Do I need a one here? To Amen. 26 and 27. Uh, please, Amen. those two verses. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Mm-hmm. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, Amen. my friends. Please draw one more box, like one more, one more um, room on the last part of your page. One more box depicting a room. And it looks like my screen is frozen, but you can still hear me, right? Yes. Okay, good. Good. So, yes. so in that last room, this um, is not so for you to show died. me. This last room you're drawing is not to show me or show someone else online. In that box, take a moment and write the name or names of anybody that you need to forgive. And this is not for anyone to see but you, okay? So please write the names of anybody that you need to forgive or to ask forgiveness from. I invite you to do that right now, just for just for 30 seconds. Okay, now on the outside of that box depicting that room, please write the names of one or two or three people that the Holy Spirit is telling you right now that he has a burden for you to reach with the good news of the soon coming Jesus Christ. So please just write down a name or two or three These could be children in your life that aren't ready for Jesus to come. They may be teenagers or young adults or older adults. Think of the different generations. Who has God given you influence with that he wants you to reach with the good news of the soon coming Savior? Okay, it looks like it lost me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes I'm hearing you and seeing you too. I'm seeing you right now. Yeah, okay. Good. Let's go for four minutes right now to break out rooms and let's pray for who is inside that box that we need to forgive and pray for those outside the box that the Holy Spirit wants us to bring to Christ. Let's, let's pray right now for four minutes and then I will close with a prayer when we come back. See you in four minutes. Okay, are we ready, everybody? We'll have very, very short prayers. Dear God in heaven, hear our prayers right now. Oh, God, give us the heart to forgive the unforgivable and to ask for forgiveness to those that we have hurt. And give us passion, God, to reach those that you have placed on our heart to reach for the kingdom of God. Hear our prayers. Amen. Loving Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to ask for forgiveness. I echo the prayers of Brother Don. I pray that you will forgive us, dear Lord, because if we if we um don't forgive others, you're not you will not forgive us. You won't even hear us. So Lord, forgive mm-hmm. us and help us to be forgiven to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Yes, Father, we ask you to please forgive through us. It is the work of your Holy Spirit. And as you, we are forgiven, help us to extend that to the ones that have hurt us and empower us to go forward, to even labor for them, for your kingdom. Amen. Father, we come before you now thanking you for our forgiveness of sins. You said if you have iniquity in our hearts, you would not hear us. So please forgive us and remember those with whom or for whom we are praying. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Anyone else? Notre Père qui est aux cieux, aujourd'hui tu nous donnes à cœur de mettre devant toi les noms des personnes avec qui on a croisé des moments difficiles. Je vous implore, Seigneur, de tout cœur, de travailler dans mon cœur et dans le cœur de chacun pour que ton amour nous habite, pour que ta présence soit entière, authentique devant ta face et que ton Esprit Saint nous transforme, Seigneur, pour avoir le caractère de Jésus. Dans le précieux nom de Jésus. Amen. Amen. And God bless you, sister in Quebec, that the Holy Spirit will do a mighty work in you and through you to, to reach all the precious people of Quebec. Amen. Anyone else? Heavenly Father, Lord God, enter our hearts, transform our hearts, Lord so that we would be able to see others like you see them as worthy mm -hmm. as um as people as your children as image bearers mm -hmm. lord the father lord help us to forgive and to mend relationships mm -hmm. relationships have been broken and severed because of sin lord mm -hmm. that is not lord heavenly father you want you want these relationships to come together to be um made whole And Lord, it is by the power of your spirit that it is possible. So Lord, please forgive us, Lord, where we have held on to um, a grudge or a broken relationship. Lord, cleanse, mm. cleanse those broken relationships, Lord, and mm. may your spirit abound. Amen. Mm. Amen. Anyone else? We're almost back. Looks like we are. Okay. Oh, still coming back. Okay, my friends, in closing. Uh, and by the way, know that the next session that I'll join you in at 5 p.m. Eastern time, it will be about what happened at Pentecost and what can happen every day in your life with the filling of the Spirit of God. See you first. Let's pray. If you are someone that needs that heart, uh, that heart surgery from the Holy Spirit, please put your hands up with palms up before the Lord, palms up before God as an act of surrender. Dear God in heaven, look in our hearts and we're asking for that heart surgery. Cut out our hard hearts towards anybody that we have differences with and give us a new heart and pour out your spirit on us like a river and give us even today, the joy of leading someone to know Jesus. Bless all those in the general conference session today. Let the Holy Spirit preside. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen and amen. 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 Amen.